the oboe started life in the Middle Ages as a shawm, a very old instrument, and it developed from the shawm into the first oboe in the Baroque times around 1680, 1690, and was used extensively by Baroque composers such as Handel and Bach. And the Baroque oboe was made of a different kind of wood to the modern oboe. It was made of boxwood, and it only had two keys at the bottom of the oboe, a C key and an E-flat key, and the rest were just holes. But it had the double reed, and it made a fairly similar sound. Uh, following this, the oboe developed into the classical period, where Mozart and Haydn wrote for it. Uh, it started adding keys as they went along, until it became a lot more developed into the 19th century, early 20th century, and changed to this grenadilla wood that we have now, and developed into the modern oboe. The wood that is used on the modern oboe is a lot heavier and more durable than on the Baroque and classical oboe, and also helps produce a darker sound. Most modern oboists make their own reeds, and to make a reed you start off with a tube of cane, a bit like bamboo, which you split into three pieces and then you do a process called gouging on a machine which makes it thinner and you get it down to a very very precise thin measurement you then use what's called a shaper to shape the cane into the the shape that you see now and at this point you then fold over this piece of cane and tie it onto the staple which is the piece of metal with cork on it using thread and then you use a sharp knife to scrape the reed very precisely leaving certain areas thicker and certain areas thinner until you end up with the finished article. The reed making process is a never-ending learning curve. I think I'll be learning how to make reeds until the day I stop playing the oboe, but it's, it's all part and parcel of playing the oboe. The oboe comes apart into three sections, like this. We have what's called the top joint, and the middle joint, and the bell. And they fit back together. The metalwork has to be very carefully aligned, because it's quite delicate. The modern oboe has approximately 46 pieces of keywork, the functions of which vary from simply covering the main tone holes, these six keys here, to uh, trill keys, and also these keys on the back which your thumb operates to help you um, play into the higher octaves. To make a sound on the oboe, you have to place the reed on your lower lip and roll your lips over your teeth and blow. Because the opening at the top of the reed is very small, the oboe demands a lot of pressure and it's quite hard work. Um, it helps to start notes using the tongue, like this. Sometimes, in oboe writing, the music is written slurred, or legato, which means no tonguing in between the notes. Because the pressure involved in playing the oboe is quite high, it takes time to build up the stamina in order to play the long phrases that sometimes composers demand of the instrument. The sound of the oboe can be made more expressive by the use of vibrato, Vibrato is produced using a combination of the diaphragm, which is a muscle at the base of your rib cage, and also controlling it using muscles in your throat. I'll play a note starting without any vibrato, and then I'll add vibrato. In some contemporary music written by living composers, various techniques are asked for of the modern oboist. One of these is a glissando, which is quite hard to do on the oboe. There are two ways of doing it. You can do a short glissando just using the mouth muscles, 
or you can slide your fingers gradually off the keys to try and do a larger glissando. Another technique that modern composers often ask for is flutter tonguing, which is basically playing the oboe whilst rolling your R's at the back of your mouth. <laughs> playing both very quietly and very loudly on the oboe is quite difficult. It's all controlled by the muscles in your tummy, your diaphragm, just below the rib cage. So to play quietly, you have to almost use more air and more support than if you were playing loudly. I'll try now. And to play loudly on the oboe, you have to open everything up, really support with your diaphragm, open your throat and go for it. Lots of composers have used the oboe to carry some of the main tunes in their writing for the orchestra. An example of one of my favourite tunes that the oboe plays in the orchestral repertoire is this from the slow movement of Brahms' Violin Concerto. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Esa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores. Hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.